I'm going to say a few words tonight about how we ended up here. Take a little journey back to 1733 when Benjamin Franklin, who got credit for starting the first or organizing the first volunteer fire department in Philadelphia. And actually, before that, there were firefighters in the United States in Jamestown. They were when they were living in their little huts or log homes or whatever they had back then, they had pipe holes and they'd go out and they'd try to pull the stuff away to keep everything from burning. And that, that's where it all started. A lot of people don't realize those that are officers where, where we get our trumpets that are on our, our uniforms, the speaking trumpets. In the 1800s, things went to horse-drawn steam power pumpers. And in many ways, like our technology, how we see it today, how things have evolved. At that time, that was the latest and greatest thing that they had. In the turn of the century, in the Industrial Revolution, brought motorized fire apparatus, gas-powered pumps that they could pump water, guys could ride in and get to the scenes faster. The golden age of firefighting, some refer to after World War II, there might even be a couple people here that can remember that. That's when America was at its best, a lot of people say. Things were being built, <coughs> factories were going strong. A lot of innovation came along. Breathing apparatus, better, better stuff, better equipment to work with. They used to say at that time it was rubber coats, leather helmets, and steel men that made the fire service great. In 1961, in our history, Maplewood was chartered, incorporated. Shortly after that, in the 60s, the firehouse that we still use today was built. Remarkable that the apparatus that, at that time that was very small, we can still fit today's apparatus in our station, although it's tight. Through the 1970s, Maplewood excelled. Their ambulance was known throughout the area. Jerry Dennis remembers. A lot of people remember when Maplewood ambulance was cracked. Like I said earlier, Wilbur was one of the first EMTs out there. In the 1980s, 1980 to be precise, I was 14. I don't want to give my age away on that one. <laughs> I, I began my career. Some people here, Tim Jaggers is one, he was a firefighter at the same time. We were in high school together. We didn't have the pagers like you guys have now. I mean, you had a, a scanner like that carried around. At the age of 17, I was the youngest assistant chief in the state of Pennsylvania. At the age of 19, I was the youngest chief in the state of Pennsylvania. I learned pretty quickly when I would go to meetings, I didn't have any respect. People didn't care what I had to say, what my opinions were, because I was just some kid. So I learned that I had to work harder than anybody else. I had to read something every day to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. A lot of guys that are, that are in this room were with me through the 80s, Bob Morcom, Jim Mascula, Jason Berry, Joe Marconi, Tim Jaggers, guys that I knew in the fire service then. During the 80s, late middle, middle of the 1980s, saw Maplewood's ambulance dissolve. <laughs> they weren't able to continue. Guys were busy with careers and working. The nature of the business had changed. In the 1990s, the fire service again went through kind of an evolution. Things were changing, new equipment was coming around, technology like thermal imaging cameras, things like that were making things a little better, but it was out of everybody's price range, especially for rural departments, so you did what you could with what you had. Things continued to change. Even though we had better equipment, building construction was changing against us, and it continues to change to this day. All the guys that are here that are either builders or firemen or whatever, 
realize that building construction has changed to the point where a house that used to burn for 10 minutes where you could possibly go in and get somebody out, now you have three or four. Much like we used to say with a mobile home back in the day. Then something huge happened for the fire service in September 11, 2001. It seemed like there was a, after what happened in New York and, and the tragedies of 9-11, where 343 firefighters were lost, once again there was a huge romance almost, you could say, with the firemen. People came out, they volunteered again, wanted to get involved, but things had changed. <coughs> it wasn't as you weren't seeing the people that you had years ago, the people that had the salt that wanted to work. It was more a lot of people that were in it for the glory, you could say. A lot of cases you saw things slip away or even erode. Call that a, a new age of volunteerism. Some people refer to that as the, the dot-com firefighter or the t-shirt firefighter. The guys that, that wear the shirt or the, the patch or this or that, but when it comes to actually doing any work, well, they got other stuff to do. I've talked many times about my feelings for pride and honor, integrity and leadership and discipline in the fire service. We've seen a lot of that slip. A lot of times we see stuff on fire scenes where people are more interested in taking a Facebook picture than they are actually doing the job for the person that we're there to help. In the past decade, we've committed to do a complete overhaul of Maplewood Fire Company. Through training and through diligence, 2009, we started our medical quick response unit. We approached Lake Township. They embraced us on that, and it's been a tremendous success. We've been able to be there for people in our community, especially if there were multiple calls and an ambulance wasn't available. It's given something that, that we can give back to our community. Through the training and the certifications that, that we read off tonight, that I read off tonight, our commitment to training, in 2014 we were able to receive an assistance to firefighters grant to replace all our turnout gear and all our breathing apparatus. In 2015, we again received an assistance to firefighters grant for a new tanker. And in May of this year, we'll place in service the first new piece of fire apparatus that Maplewood's ever been able to receive. And the drawings of that are up here on the table. Another thing that we're very proud of in 2015, it's up here on the table, is that we've been recognized by the State Fire Commissioner's Office for the level of training and the professional certification that the fire department holds. We are here this evening, I said in the beginning, how did we get here? We're here this evening because of all of you. You can have all the equipment in the world, you could have all the money in the world if that was possible, but it doesn't mean anything without every one of you, even those that aren't members of Maplewood, your own respective companies that you make it work. There's a lot of stuff going on about Right now, the state fire commissioners do it. They had a symposium in southern Pennsylvania to talk about the dwindling volunteerism. They want to do one up in this area. And it's true. They're, and when you read a lot of the stuff that comes out of these meetings, the ideas that people are putting out there to try to bring volunteers in are laughable. There was a time when the firehouse was kind of the cultural or, or fellowship hub of the community, if you will, where Guys didn't have all the other options that they have today to go out on the internet or do this or run. There's a million places you could just drive to Dixon City that 20 years ago you couldn't go to half of those. So the fire department has to appeal to something to make people want to come in, to want to be involved. I propose that it has to be structured. It has to be organized. It has to be something 
that the fire service is supposed to be a paramilitary organization. We go to a lot of functions where things have slipped, things have eroded. The uniform that we wear, people, I, I can't speak for them or what they're thinking, but I know what they, what it looks like to me, the way they wear their uniform or lack thereof. The, some of the t-shirts, the things that are out there like that. Why we wear the uniform is not out of arrogance or out of pride, or it is out of pride. And it's to show our love for the job and our commitment to what we do. I'm a truck driver by trade. When truck drivers die, there's no bagpipers, there's no uniform, there's no long procession of trucks, unless it's some crazy thing. It's because of the pride that goes along with this job. And we have to make sure that we don't let it slip. I say a lot of times, we're anytime, if you're associated with this department or any department out there, you're a moving billboard. Every time one of the trucks go up and down the road, the way those trucks look, the way they drive, the way you wear your uniform, and the way you wear your other uniforms. What's your other uniform? The stickers on the back window that say what fire department you belong to, the license plate on the front, the t-shirt that says you belong to so-and-so fire company. How does it look if you st stop for pizza, you park in the fire lane because it's raining with your fire department license plate on and run in and get your pizza while some little old lady has to walk from the parking lot to go in. Does that set a good example for the fire department? No. We have to think about these things all the time. In closing, I want to say one thing. Everything in life, you're either involved or committed. Do you want your spouse to be involved with you or committed to you? Do you want your employer to be involved with you or committed to you? Who do you want to come save you if you're in a fire? Somebody that's involved or somebody that's committed? Thank you.